Hey everyone, this is an interesting idea, which I call Stream of Thought Coder. So in this project, we are giving uh, GPT some idea, in this case, a jumping platformer game and pie game, and we let it create fragments of thoughts, maximum of 20 tokens, again and again, and we accumulate those thoughts, we first evaluate them, if it passes a certain score, we accumulate them, just like this, each one of the thoughts are like this. Uh, and then after that, as when certain iterations have reached, then we generate the code from it and we save it to a file. And this is an iterative process. It's automatic. It keeps going. So again, we uh, generate a thought, we evaluate it. And then once we reach a certain threshold, once we accumulated enough thoughts, then we create, we save those thoughts into file and then we generate code by the, from those thoughts and we save it to a file like this. So this is the first code that was generated here. I'm just running it in a split terminal to create a split terminal. You just go here, go to split terminal and command prompt. So we can run it while at the same time, we are still continuing the process. I'm going to just uh, run the first file. And this is the first result. I can jump with space and use the arrow keys, but there are no platforms. So the first, this was the first code that was generated from these thoughts, but we have accumulated more thoughts and generated another code. Let's see if there's any difference. Let's run that one. I'm just going to run the second one now. And now, yeah, okay. Now we have some platforms. However, the our guy falls very quickly. I'm going to try to jump right away. Oh, still fell. Let's try it one more time. Real quickly. Oh, yeah. I'm not being able to catch it. Uh, let's let's wait for the third one. Uh, in the meantime, I'll talk a little bit about the code. So we make three separate calls, one to generate a new thought based on a previous thought and an idea. Originally in the beginning, beginning iteration, previous thought is the idea. We set max tokens to 20, so these can be fragmented, but nevertheless, they accumulate. And uh, sometimes this, this is able to produce some really interesting stuff, which I'll show you. It actually created the best tower defense game that I was able to generate with GPT, although, you know, it took a few attempts. So now we have our third thoughts and the third code has been generated. Let's run that one. Let's see how that looks. Okay, again, so it's still working on it. Let's wait for the fourth one. In the meantime, like I said, we generate uh, a thought. After that, we evaluate that thought based on creativity, feasibility, coherence, uh, and relevance. Okay, and we return those. And we find those scores. We're not using any JSON mode or function calling. We just simply instruct GP2 to return it like that. And then we extract it with regex. We get the scores. And then we calculate the average so we can actually measure it against something. And when we have enough thoughts, according to our criteria, we send all those thoughts to GPT and let it generate code. So here we're taking an idea, in this case, a jumping platformer game and pie game. We initialize our thoughts list to zero. Previous thought starts with the idea at first. So we enter a loop. This can be as, much, as many as, as you like. We generate a thought, we evaluate that thought, and we get a final score, average score, evaluated by relevance, creativity, feasibility, coherence. And then we check to see if, it is, if the average score for that particular thought is about eight. If it is so, then we append it. And then here, every 10 iterations, I'm saving the thoughts to a .txt file and generating the code, but you can actually uncomment the second line and make sure that uh, you do it every 10 thoughts every 10 thoughts that have been accumulated, which passes the score of eight. So that is really up to you. But when this condition is filled, we write the thoughts to file, just like we're doing now, we accumulate them. And then we also generate code from them and save it to a file by extracting it from in between uh, Python code blocks. So we have our fourth code. Uh, let's run this, see if it is any good, any better. Okay, this time, every time we jump, we move upwards. But like I said, this is an iterative process and it doesn't work uh, perfectly every time. But this is an uh, interesting way of generating code for sure. I'll put the, the code file will be available in Patreon. Link will be in the description. Also, if you're enjoying my projects, take note that I have over 200 of them and you can watch the videos to all of them at my website, echohive.live. Link will be in the description. You can find the code download links here too if you're a patron. I also just started my Everything GPT Masterclass. You can actually take a look at it too. It covers everything from GPT for Vision to DALI, also building advanced some uh, advanced projects with assistant uh, with OpenAI library. So take a look at it. 
in the meantime, we are about to generate the fifth code. And if this doesn't provide us promising results, maybe we'll start this uh, all over again. Okay, here is our fifth file. This is a bit longer than the previous ones. Let's run it. Okay, this is this is almost going to work, except there is no vision within the player and the platform. But we are almost there, maybe in the next situation. So we'll let this running then. You can also check out my new app, CodeHive, where you can find 900, over 900 GPT-powered Python apps all for free. Uh, you can just browse over them, copy the code. Uh, you can, it also has a really nice search function. For example, if you search for travel, it'll show you the travel related apps. These are usually chat apps and some of them sometimes can have simple syntax errors. Be mindful of that. Uh, these are all AI generated. If you like the apps, you can download all of them for $100 at Patreon. Link to this will be in the description as well. So we are writing the sixth code. As you can see, if you look at the minimap, this was the first series of thoughts, second, third, and fourth, fifth, and sixth. So we keep accumulating. So although these are just fragments, they each refer to a certain part of the game. And obviously we do evaluate it and make sure it's relevant to the original idea. So usually speaking, what I found is that when you run this enough times, you can create some really interesting stuff. Let me show you the tower defense game that I had generated from this many thoughts. As you can see, this was the final. And it really surprised me. If I go here and run the final. So it's an automated one. But as you can see, here's our tower firing. And it actually, the bullet has a curvature. I was really surprised. But like I said, it doesn't produce this good of a result every time. And I'm not sure what happens when these little enemies go beyond the line. But the fact that it's tracking the objects and it has curvature really surprised me. So I think maybe this idea can be improved. So feel free to work on it. Okay, we have the sixth one ready. Let me go back out of this and run the latest, latest game. It's going to be the sixth one. Yeah, this one. Oh, this one will try to use uh, background music. So yeah, you can buy games mixer module. So you can try to introduce, you know, external assets, which we can't utilize. So I'll just leave it at that. Like I said, it's an interesting idea. Feel free to play around with it. Uh, like I said, when we receive the code, we extract it between the Python code blocks. Uh, let me know what you think. And if you improve upon it, let us know in the Discord uh, server. If you'd like to talk about this stuff, link will be in the description. And I'll see you in the next video.